Guys, welcome back to another episode of Volume Volumen. Today we have entrepreneur, owner of Dumpling Dojo, black belt in martial arts. He just ran five miles. We were just talking before the cans were rolling. <laughs> His name is Anthony Defino. He's my cousin. Welcome to the show. What's up? Welcome, Thank welcome. You. Thank you, Defino. Thank you for having me. So you ran five miles before coming. Yep. Like you ran here? No. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about riding my bike here, but no, but no like literally, I uh, I just finished. Running uh, five miles, I did uh, 20 push-ups, 20 squats in between each mile. Yeah. And it was just so I can get everything out of the way before I start the rest of my day. Yeah, that's right. awesome. Um, did you, uh, are you like just training for something or are you just like... Uh, no, no, yeah, I'm just training. Just, uh, just... I, I usually try to walk uh, like three to five miles a day. Okay. But this month I'm bumping it up to, to like jogging and running just because I, I really want to shred like maybe like 10 or 15 more pounds. I feel you. Yeah. I'm, I'm on the same wave. I did uh, 5K yesterday, mm-hmm. 5K the day before that. Did you know a 5K is, uh, by the way? 3.2 miles yeah. or something like that. So uh, did you know a 5K was 3.2 miles? Am, am I the only yeah, idiot? You're the only one. You're the only one. Okay, so here's my question that I want to raise, though, because I, I've been asking a couple people this, and if you're watching this, I want to know. A 5K, I thought was five miles. 10K, 10 miles. No, no, no. 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 5K is five kilometers. Yeah, but but the, the abbreviation is KM. So why are we dropping the M? Because it's kilometers. But you would label it 5M or 5KM, not just K. It's it's a 5K, bro. It's the you say okay, but, but here's, here's, kilometers. Do I make 10KM? No, I make 10K. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, but, okay all right. Here's, here's, here's. I know, but it's it's 5K. Even if you put an M at the end, I get that now. it's still a K. I get that first. now. First. <laughs> Yeah, but that's, so here's, so why is a half marathon 12.5 and a full 25 miles? So why are we judging these by miles and these by kilometers? Because That throws me off. Because a marathon is based off of miles, not kilometers. Correct. So it doesn't start with a K. Right, but the system doesn't follow either or. It's like these two are kilometers, these two are miles. Why is that? Why, why would we just run through the whole thing as kilometers? Why don't you just ask Google how many miles are in a kilometer and then it <laughs> it's <doesn't>... about three. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you know. Regardless, that could be we're, wrong. I don't know. <laughs> we're, we're, we're arguing. We're arguing. Uh, no, not a argue. letter. I know, but it's just the letter. It's, and the letter <clears throat> stands for kilometers, not miles. I, no, so I don't disagree that the letter stands for what it stands for. I'm saying the the way like you say like okay like we're gonna do a 5k we're gonna do a 10k why does then the next step above that like the distance of what you're running then switch over to miles now that's like you going and getting but, a drink okay, I know, and we're, we're measuring like give me an eight but, ounce cup but, but, give me a 16 ounce cup but you no know what one, make but, it a gallon but now no like one, what, what no it just switches up i know but no one's switching up anything you know what i'm saying like if i said yo Let's go for a three mile run. Are you gonna be like, no, I'd rather go for a five K? <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> exactly, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm done with this conversation. Uh, you did jujitsu this morning too? Yeah, yeah. You got your black belt recently, right? Yeah, I got Congratulations. my black belt. Oh, nice. Uh, I'll fuck you up, bro. I, last I, year, I believe him now. I've had, it, I've had it for a year. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I got it. I got it in like March, March of last year. You're still at uh, Silver Fox. You, I would. I so we did an MMA uh, like boot camp maybe like two weeks ago. Now there was a girl that was wearing um, a shirt from your gym. I didn't go up and say hi, but like I saw it, and I was like, oh shit. No, dude, it, it was like an all right. women's camp, like you know, everywhere. But though. Silver Fox is like everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Are you training uh, regularly or what do you? Yeah, I try. I try to train uh, when I'm even when I'm not training. I try to train at least once or twice a week. Okay. You know, but when I'm regularly training, I try to train at least three to five times a week. That's good. You know, like my if we're talking about jujitsu in regards to learning at a comfortable pace, if you're training once to twice a week, it's kind of like you're standing still. Yeah, you're not making much improvement. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like you're, you're, you're kind of like you're going holding through the your sort of... Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you're, you're, you can hold your degree, but you're not going to progress to the next one. Definitely. If you want to progress to the next one, you have to train at least three times a week. I agree. To five times a week. I agree. You know, like more just, four to five to really for yeah, it to stick. It's, 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 it's for not only for it to stick, but like for you to like gain a certain pace. Right. To see where you're making mistakes, yeah. where you could be improving. Just because just, just handling jujitsu alone without thinking is rough. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you have to be comfortable 
yeah. getting like smashed and fucking yep. and annihilated, you yep. know, and then and then be able to think while under that pressure. Yep, yep. yep. You know, so if like if if every single week you come twice a week and you're just getting used to getting your ass kicked, you're never really going to learn how to think. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But like you go three times, four times a week and it's just like, yeah, the ass kicking's like Yeah, it's nothing. You're not even you're thinking used about to it, at it. That yeah, point. you know? Yeah, like, that that's just the, the entry level like this yeah. is supposed to be happening yeah until so you actually make some you're sort supposed of, to get beat up yeah like that's it that's it's it's jujitsu yeah. you know like and you're you're going against someone that's been training more than you so there was a guy uh when uh, mm-hmm. i was a white belt i was like a three stripe or something and i was doing decent like i was you know um but there was a guy who was a blue belt um much 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 smaller much you know lighter probably like 130 40 pounds um really really good with arm bars and uh, I, I would just get consistently armbarred for like, like every single time I like just rolled with them, right? And, uh, but to the point where it was like within that like, you know, eight minute round or whatever, dude, I'd get tapped like nine times, right? Mm. And it just got to the point where I'm like, all right, I was like, bro, like, I don't know how long, but like, I am going to train every single day and I will arm bar you. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, like, like the role, the, you know, reverse the roles essentially. It literally took me one full year. Yeah. Of just getting my ass kicked, um, and, and 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 I remember like you know by then like he had probably gotten like a couple more stripes, but I, I armbarred him, and then and then like I looked at the dates, and it was literally to the date. Like I made a video, put it on Snapchat when Snapchat was a thing, and like it was just like one of those things where I was like, "Fuck, bro!" Like yeah. I did it. Like I got <laughs> you back, and then I could like every now and then kind of get him. But you know what I mean? And it, so like, but it was like, and then then, that, then that, he knee barred you right after you armbarred. <laughs> I like knee bars, actually. Yeah, me too. Did you watch the fights this, this past yeah, weekend? Yeah. yeah what did you think of the fights? I think they were awesome, man. I, I caught Who the Who were you rooting one. for? Uh, I wasn't. Really, I don't really root for anyone. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't really root for. You anyone. don't have any favorites. I don't have. I don't have any favorites at all. Um, not one bit. Uh, I just. I just really enjoy just watching the fight. Right. You know, like if. Uh, you used to do some kickboxing too, no? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I did. I did it more for cardio than anything else. Got it. You know, but um, when when it comes to fighting, I really just like the whole general aspect of how they mastered, you know, different Martial facets arts. of, you know, fighting yeah. and the, the way they transition through it so quickly. Like in, in two minutes, you'll see someone do kickboxing, boxing, transition to jujitsu, grappling, wrestling, and then, you know, back to boxing. And it's just like... And then, like, you're defending, like, a Muay Thai yeah. slash, like, like it's, so it just gets... It's just crazy. Yeah, it's you're reading crazy. six it's, different martial arts all at the same time. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. yeah. I have... I Hella respect. Um, anyways, uh, I always like to talk about business when we're on this podcast. Um, you are the proud owner of Dumpling Dojos. Yep. In East Rutherford, or is it Rutherford? Rutherford. 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 Um, right next to the Wells Fargo, right yep. next to that, was it uh, Red Basil? Is that in the, the spot? Yep. Um, you've been in business for how long now? Uh, seven years, I want to say. With that, that restaurant? With that restaurant, yeah. But you've been years. in business way before that restaurant. Everything, yeah. What's the story there, right? Like, how did you get into this? The restaurant? Yeah, how did you get into the restaurant? The restaurant, uh, I got I got lucky. I was in the Carpenters Union um, as a fourth year apprentice. I was about to journey out and be a full-blown journeyman. And uh, I want to say three months before I turned into a journeyman, I had the idea of starting my own restaurant. And I wanted to do skirt steaks and empanadas. Okay. And um, I started scouting locations so I could do my own concept. And in doing so, I bumped into uh, Big Bull's Little Plates at the time. Yep. And uh, the owner was selling that location for uh, $30,000. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I was just like... When you say selling the location, you mean like the name or you're, sell- you're talking about like the, the real estate? Like, no, the, the no, space? not the real estate. Just the space. Basically, he was just <clears throat> selling everything inside of the restaurant and the concept itself. Got it. Okay. You know, that's pretty good. So like 30, 30 grand. Much. Yeah. But I, I didn't know what that at the time, you know what I'm saying? But he was, he was hoping that I failed. And this you know is what I'm saying? no experience. I had zero experience. Oh, okay. The only, the only time I ever cooked was at home. And I taught myself how to cook a couple of years prior because, uh, I didn't have too many relationships with a good cook cook. 
and I was tired of um, female partners. I was tired. Yes, I, was tired, <laughs> I just yes. want to clarify that. <laughs> yes, yes, only female partners. Not that there's anything wrong with anything else. <laughs> you are a straight man. <laughs> yes, it's just my personal preference. So, uh, eat my food, and um, I guess not other things. Uh, but um, yeah, I basically got tired of being with women that didn't know how to cook rice or anything at all, and uh, I just started learning how to cook all on my own. So um, in doing so, it put me in a position to take over that location. I originally was supposed to be the manager, and my uh, partner at the time was supposed to take over the kitchen. And um, uh, long story short, the owner that was training him was about to pull out of the deal and just abandon us. And I had, in the middle of uh, the shift, I, had, I pulled him out of the kitchen and was just like, I'm like, you know, what's going on? You know, like you have 15 years restaurant experience, right? You know, fucking like you're 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 dying in the kitchen over here. Yeah. And uh, he goes, he goes, wait, wait, wait. It's like before, you know, before we get into anything, he's just like, what's the difference between a muscle and a clam? And he was just like so genuine about that. And as soon as he said that to me, I was like, get the fuck out of the kitchen. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, we're switching. I'm like, I'm gonna learn how to cook, and you're gonna fucking manage the front. And then literally uh, that night, there was a car show in the front, and I was training uh, to learn how to cook the menu. And in like two hours, I was going to have like 200 people just fucking walk into the restaurant. Oh, wow. What? Yeah. And I, 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 I literally, I had that cook at the time show me how to do everything, and like, and like I pretended <laughs> to like cook everything because all the ingredients were there. I wasn't going to, and there was, we had no customers. So I, I, I couldn't just sit there and just like yeah. cook orders for yeah. no one. So like literally I just went through the motions, like standing still and moving. I'm like, okay, if I make a ramen, I have to grab these three ingredients. I have to move it over here. I wait two minutes, I pull it out. And like, I just kept on repeating that for hours. The process, the, like the understanding. The actual process, yeah. So then when, when I got hit with that fucking wave, you were ready. We were good. Yeah, like I made it. I made it through the night, and then I just started learning how to cook. You were doing situational roles in the what kitchen. A yeah, test. for real. <laughs> and then the, the pun intended. Dude, the, the the guy that that taught me how to cook, he was uh, Chinese, spoke absolutely no fucking English, and uh, the only the only thing that he ever said to me was good, no good, or. Um, he just gave you a thumbs up or a thumbs down. No, that, that, it was just good. good so, so. Good, no good. Eventually, I got like a very good. Yeah. And that, like, that was it, bro. Fucking. So, but like, how, how, how did you know? So like this, this opportunity basically landed on your lap, essentially, right? Oh, yeah. I, I didn't know. I just, I literally quit the Carpenters Union and just. You just took over. a risk. Yeah, I figured I was going to college. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was just like, this is $30,000 for me to learn the ins and out of this business. Right. I'm like, it's, it's a really cheap price. Um, I, 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 I had no failure in mind, right? You know what I'm saying? It was just like, this is what I'm going to do now. Yeah. And, and we're going to figure it out. Yeah. We're going to figure it the fuck out. That's awesome. You know, like, that's it. Like the, the business almost actually, no, I mean the business did zero out like three or four fucking times, you know what I'm saying? But it's just like, it's, you just roll with Trial the fucking and punches never. and yeah, you that's know, the business. Like, that's it. Like I, I just had to figure out what the fuck I was doing wrong and. Just keep moving. Yeah. But it's moving and grooving now. Oh, yeah, bro. We're killing it now. We're yeah. killing it now. I, I, learned, I learned the ins and out of it. It's, it's you know, it's, we, we're, we're, we're extremely uh, efficient. We're extremely consistent. Our quality is there. And uh, our customer service is basically on point. So now, now that I'm, I have the operations aspect of it, I can pull back and just uh, monitor the numbers because I, right. I was always good with finance. Yeah, you know, like no matter what numbers is my shit. Yeah, and the and then uh, work wise, like you're not you're not gonna outwork me. You yeah, know what I'm saying like you're not you're not gonna put in a longer day than me, especially not when it's my business. Right, right, right. You know, I was I was doing twelve hour, fourteen hour days for other people. You know, I had no problem doing sixteen, eighteen hour days for myself. Yep, I feel that. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so now that so you've gone from basically like working in the business and now just working on the business. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, at the time we when I when I first well, the, the business was so cheap because it wasn't making any money at all, and the hours of operation sucked. So the when I bought the location, it was maybe making maybe like four thousand a week, five thousand a week, 
generally speaking, uh, we were open from Tuesday to Saturday, closed Sunday and Monday. And every single week, we would be negative on Tuesday, negative on Wednesday. Thursday would be our special. We'd make enough money on Thursday to get our bills paid for the week. And then Friday and Saturday, we actually made a little bit of money. Right. You know what I'm saying? But now now we make anywhere between three to 5,000 a day or yeah. 5,000 to 7,000 on a busy day. That's good. You know, so we, we went from making 5,000 a week to 5,000 a day. And what we used to do in a month, we do in a week now. Yeah, that's awesome. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank awesome, you. dude. <clears throat> and you've ventured out now outside of uh, the restaurant business too. Like I see you do some other things. What are you, what are uh, you doing? Yeah, well, I, I, uh, my, I, I started off in property management before the Carpenters Union. Right. So you've done a couple of different things. I mean, like I've known you obviously like yeah, most well, of my I, life. I own like six different businesses right now. Yeah, so with, walk me through that, right? Like what's the, where, even before the restaurant, like, you know. Before, well, the, I. My, like what's the origin here, right? Like origin, why do you even get into any of this, right? Like what is it, is that like just your passion, your calling? No, no, I just always wanted something that was mine, you know? So my, my father kind of, my father owned and operated his own property management company, which consisted of more than uh, 10 buildings and like 200 units. Okay. So uh, he was kind of like molding me in that direction when I was young and uh, he wanted me to go to school to become a lawyer so I could be a lawyer for the company. And, right. and while I was in college studying to be a lawyer, I worked for him uh, with the company and I was like taking people to court and shit when I was like, 17 and 18. Were you suing people? Uh, no, no, I wasn't suing anyone. Defending but people? No, no, no. Uh, I, was, I was evicting people. Evictions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, so. So people didn't like you. No one liked me, no. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean I got to pay rent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, can't no. just live here? <laughs> no, no one liked me at all. And it's like, bro, come on, fucking, you're, 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 yeah. you're a 30 or 40 year old, 40 year old getting kicked out by, by a fucking 17. 17 year old or yeah. a fucking 18 year old. Yeah. And uh, they they would talk shit all they wanted. To What's me. the worst story? Like what, what? Like something you'll never forget? Where you're like, bro, this this somebody said this to you, or they did this to you? Oh like, no, some I mean, crazy shit. I mean, there there was always a bunch of fucking bad story. You know, what I'm saying? in reference to, in reference to talking shit. Like whatever, always, dude, whatever you want to share, bro. Like, what would you say is something that like you'd be like, damn, bro, like that really happened? Um, I guess there's two that stick out a little bit more than anything else. One was. Um, I had a super accept a check that um, that was like completely wrong. You know, like like his name was where the person's signature was supposed to go. Like, Got so, it. but he already gave the tenant the keys to the apartment. Oh, so even though they didn't have a lease, and they and they gave a check that he accepted. Uh, when I called the cops, the cops told me that uh, it was too late. You know, like I have to take them to court. So it's just like, okay, now I'm going to lose out on two months worth of rent plus whatever damages they potentially do to the apartment right? because time. my super is a fucking idiot. And, and you can't cash that check. And I, and I, I can't cash that did, check. Did you guys go to like the silver route and be like, hey, sir, like, you know, we need another check? Not one fucking bit. No. Not one <laughs> bit. This was, I mean, I was young. Right. Yeah. I was young. I didn't give a fuck. Yeah. I, I didn't know any better. I mean, I did know better, but I just didn't give a fuck. You were like, you know what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for real. <laughs> so um, I went, I went, I tried talking to the guy. He was basically like, fuck you, go take me to court. Cause like he knew the whole fucking process. He knew what he was doing. He knew. So he, he like doing. intentionally it scammed. Yeah. It wasn't his first time, you yeah. know? People so I, I, I really didn't give a shit. And I, I was having a very bad day already, uh, you know, dealing with fucking baby moms and all that other bullshit. And um, I went. I went straight to the fucking apartment, and um, it, he wasn't there. His crackhead girlfriend was there, fucking all <laughs> like fucking cracked out. Oh man! And literally, I just I uh, I went inside the apartment. I turned off the fucking water. I went downstairs. I shut off the electricity to the apartment, and I took the fucking door off the hinges. So they had no front door to the apartment. And, <laughs> Yo, you're like, savage. and I literally, I walked oh out of the fucking God. building with the fucking front door. With this guy's swung yeah. the fuck <laughs> <laughs> oh You know, God. like had. Fuck with me. <laughs> yeah, for real, for real. I had, had they known better, I definitely could have got in trouble. Yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? But they didn't know any better, and it kind of fucking solved the. the yeah, problem. what are they gonna say? Like, yeah, like I, mean, I scammed them, but like the fucker with me, like he just <laughs> called me up and was just like, "Fuck you, you can't do." That. I'm like, I don't give a shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we're if we're gonna go to court, then fucking you're an asshole and I'm an asshole, and we could both admit it in court. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Savage. <laughs> 
And then uh, one one other time, uh, I was young. Like that time, I knew what I was doing was completely fucking illegal. You know right. what I'm saying? And I was just kind of like hoping. And you don't regret any of that. Fuck that. Nah, fuck that. <laughs> I'd do it again. I'd fucking do it again. <laughs> That's what everyone wants to yeah, do when you yeah, do the bad that. tenants, man. And I love then, it. Uh, another, another time, I was I was a little younger. And um, I had to check an electrical panel inside of a tenant's apartment. And they, uh, they wouldn't let me in. And um, I called up my father at the time. I think I was like 17 or 18. And he said, kick the door down. He's like, just kick the fucking door down. And I didn't know any better. You know what I'm you saying? Just listen I'm, to him. You know, like, fucking, you own it. I don't know shit. I'm just going to school. Fucking, yeah. you told me to kick the door down? I'm going to kick the fucking door down. Okay. So I kicked the fucking door down, and, uh, you know, she, like, calls the fucking cops or whatever, and then uh, I check what I have to check. I call back my dad, and um, I'm like, I'm like, what do you want me to do now? And uh, he's like, why? What's going on? And I'm like, well, she's calling the cops because I kicked the door down. He's like, you really kicked the door down? I'm, like, I'm like, you told me to kick the fucking door down. I'm like, boss, you said kick the door down. Yeah, so I like, like, the door what down. the fuck, bro? Like, fucking, I listen to you, right? Like, You're my employer, yeah. bro. You told me you to kick the, the door green down. Green. I kick a fucking door oh, down, all right? Like, what you want? Tell me jump, I say how hot. Yeah, so, you know, and then uh, luckily I was, I was in school for law, so... I kind of uh, uh, manipulated the situation to my advantage. Uh, and uh, there was also a leak going into that apartment for like fucking years oh. that we had to take care of. And it just so happened to be by the electrical panel. Oh. So when the fucking cops got there, I was just like, look, man, there was a fucking fire hazard that I had to take care of. And the fucking tenant wasn't letting me, giving me fucking access. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I just fucking went in. I made sure that the fucking water wasn't hitting the electrical panel. I fucking yeah. shut everything off and... That's why I kicked the, go the door down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then they kind of just like Diffuse. smooth everything out. It's just like, okay. Right, no more know. door kicking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've never kicked a door down since then. You know, I just, I, I get lawyers now. It's a little easier. That's fucking hilarious. Oh my God. Yeah. Very quick witted. Love that. Yeah. So that was like early on, though, right? That's like teens. Oh, yeah, that's like early yeah. 20s that's, type that's, shit. That's like, that's, that, that's like real, real early on. And then while, while I was in college, and uh, running his company, I, uh, I kind of figured out that law wasn't in my direction as good as I was uh, with it. And I was getting good grades and I, I'm sure I could have been an excellent lawyer. I, uh, I, I realized a long time ago that um, law is more uh, politics and money than mm -hmm. actual uh, justice. Mm, so I, I'm true. like, I, I didn't, I didn't really want to spend my time in that direction. I figured I could make more money in a, in a, in a more efficient manner without screwing over anyone or defending criminals. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I figured if, if I was going to be a good lawyer and make money, it would probably be only criminals that could afford me. And uh, if I wanted to defend anyone that was innocent, I wasn't going to fucking make any money because they can't afford lawyers. Damn. That's a very good... Uh, never thought of it that way. Yeah. So, the system <laughs> we're in, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you know, so I... Uh, I so then carpentry came next or? No, well, I, uh, I started buying my own building. So basically I was working for my father and uh, I was just saving all that money. And then once I found uh, the first building that I could purchase, I, uh, I asked him for a loan for my first building. I put down uh, my money as a down payment. He put down his name as a backer and, you know, I got, I got my first building. Where was that? Uh, 4113 Park Ave, Union City. Mm. It was a 16-unit apartment building that I had to take care of while I was taking care of everything else, you know, and then it kind of trickled from there. Uh, two years, three years after the fact, the building that I got for 500000 inflated to like $1 million. Um, and then I just refinanced against that. And Pulled out and then and just bought, did it again. And yeah, just, bought another building, you yeah. know, and then... <clears throat> uh, I got I got into carpentry. Um, was it like to be a better property manager, or was that just like? Uh, I guess real story is a little uh, <laughs> it's a little uh, emotional. Okay, but um, my father was going senile, and uh, he accused me of stealing and kicked me out of the company. So uh, I just got into the carpenters union, 
because I figured uh, no one knew how to take care of that building or his buildings the way I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were going to get me back eventually because my sister had taken over. But uh, she didn't realize, you know, what I realized and all the work that I was actually doing. And I knew that um, uh, every five years there's a state inspection. And the only person that was making sure that we passed any of these city inspections and state inspections was me. You know what I'm saying? Because my father was more um, like put fucking band-aids and fucking scotch tape on it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I'm more like, no, spend the 2000 fucking dollars and get a fucking licensed anything yeah, fix. and fucking do it right. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's just right, we're. I'm not stealing money. I'm fucking spending money to make sure that we don't have to fucking pay any fines once the fucking city or state inspectors come in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So exactly that happened. Mm. You know, so while, while I was leaving the Carpenters Union, working on my restaurant, spending 12 to 14 hours a day, I got the phone call to come back to my father's business because it was like falling apart. It couldn't pay fucking taxes. It couldn't pay sewage. Like basically the company was just fucking in debt and was just going to be lost. Right. So then I, I literally had to come back and just uh, run all the numbers, fucking fire everyone, do, you know, do everything. I even had to kick my father out of his own uh, office Damn. just because it's like, I like if, if someone's going to fix this, I need to know exactly where all the fucking money's going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that means like you're not allowed to fucking touch anything. Yeah. You know, I have no problem giving you a fucking allowance and like, you know, I'm not I'm not taking away your lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. But I I need to fix a multi-million dollar fucking business right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't do that with anyone fucking bothering me, especially while I'm trying to fucking figure out a restaurant and taking care of fucking two kids. Right. You know, like That's a lot. No. It's yeah. Like, it's like a lot to like and that was that was uh how many years ago? Or what, uh, like 25, 26? No. Um, I had my second son. Yeah, maybe like, maybe like 15 years ago. 15 years ago? Yeah. Damn. That's, <clears throat> that's, that's, uh, I'm at a loss for words. Yeah. Good for you, though. That's, Congratulations. It bro. worked out. Yeah. You made it all work out. How are the kids? Uh, kids are good. Yeah, they're getting big. The, the, they just graduated high school or something, right? One, one's about to graduate high school. Yeah, yeah. Dude, and time then, flies. Yeah, and then the other one is about to be a junior. I remember being in high school playing video games with you. They're fucking taller than me. Poofy oh. be daddy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> bro, this guy's gamer tag on Xbox was Poofy be daddy. It's it's tattooed on my uh, oh, Xbox have? trigger finger. <laughs> <laughs> He used to call me. We used to play like Halo, Gears of War, Call of Duty. He'd be like, yo, you hopping on tonight? It's like, yeah, I'm hopping on tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and we just rock for hours. Dude, yeah. After his like 16 hour fucking rent <laughs> days. Yeah. Yo, you yeah. ran on no sleep, honest to God, and, dude. Uh, yeah, dude. Just... I, I honestly lived on maybe like three to four hours of sleep for like 10 years plus. Uh, yeah. You know, like. Like, that was it. I'd, I'd go to sleep at fucking midnight. I'd wake up at, like, 4 or 5, you know, and it, that was it. And just, was, just go about your day. Just do it over and over and over and over again. I I, I, uh, I was, I thought I didn't, I couldn't sleep, you know. I think it was just a lot of bad habits. And then uh, I, I forced myself to drink to sleep, um, you know, for a very long time. Right. And then, like, now, now I just changed up a, a lot of... My bad habits turned them into good habits, and now I are you, sleep. Are you able better. to sleep now? Oh yeah, just, I sleep just... like a fucking baby, bro. <laughs> 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 so, <clears throat> outside of the restaurant, what else do you have going on? I mean, like I know I, you've been doing some stuff in like Puerto Rico. Are you like doing oh, real estate yeah. over there? Well, or what, out, what you... Outside of the restaurant, I um, I got a lot of shit going on. Uh, I just bought a house in Puerto Rico that I'm trying to BNB. I bought a well, I should be able to BNB at the end of this month. I bought a house in East Rutherford, a three-family house. I'm currently trying to get it redeveloped into a 10-unit apartment building. Mm. Um, I just sold a house in Hasbrook Heights. I'm going to do a 1031 exchange to um, avoid paying um, capital gains tax. Yep. Um, so I'm 
reinvesting that money into I love the openness by the way it's yeah. like yeah we're just gonna put that I mean it's true I mean, everybody does it yeah. but nobody talks about oh, it yeah, dude. Well, I mean, you, have to. You, got, you, you have to bro. It's, okay so it's it's the difference between making four hundred thousand dollars and paying forty percent taxes on it right and then uh, you keep the rest or you buy another seven hundred thousand dollar building free and clear for a couple years, okay. No, to not, make more. Not, not even for a couple years, because you bu- you're buying it cash. No, could well that eventually you'll have capital gains on no, that. No, 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 you're not gonna have anything. And I don't see, but that's the, that's what I'm saying. So like, we're still gonna get that cash. We're just not gonna pay taxes on it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because capital gains is I made a profit. So as long as I reinvest that seven hundred and thirty thousand into another building, that seven hundred and thirty thousand, you don't have to. Yeah. for it. I, I didn't make anything. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I don't have to pay taxes on it. Yeah. But I can still borrow five hundred thousand dollars or six hundred thousand dollars against that building. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So then now, yeah, I have to pay the high ass fucking interest rate. You know, but but who gives a shit? It just saved me. Hundred and sixty thousand dollars in taxes, taxes to fucking make that mortgage oh. payment. Yeah. Two years or three years from now, I could always refinance and potentially lower that rate. And on top of that, what I'm investing in is I sold two residential units in Hasbro Heights. I in, I'm investing in two residential units plus a commercial location in Garfield. So now, you know, considering all my projects. Not only, not only did I save myself $160,000 in taxes, not only did I put another $500,000 of um, cash flow, you know what I'm saying, for my business, but now that commercial location also has a hood system, so now I could start my prep kitchen for my franchise. Mm. So not, not only did I avoid paying $160,000 in taxes, but I also have a free commercial location to start my next business venture and, yeah. and the rent that I don't have to pay, I can put into payroll. So now I don't have to work there either. Yep. And then once that company is now profiting, you make money from I that. I can and raise take- the rent on that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then now I can actually tax defer the profit margins that that company is making into the mortgage that I have against the building because I can, I can raise my rent to five thousand dollars a month. You know right. what I'm saying? And then now my my company that owns the building doesn't have to pay taxes on that because it already has a mortgage for that five hundred thousand dollars. You know That's, what I'm saying? It's wild. So 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 I'm 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 just setting myself up for my businesses to be more profitable or have tax advantages waiting for them in the future. Yeah. The word is tax advantage. Yep. Right, we're not tax sheltering. Yep, that sounds illegal. Not evading. Nope. We're not. We're not, we're not evading. evading. We're, we're, we're still paying the IRS. We're, we're we're taking advantage of tax laws. Yes, IRS, right? you are still getting your money. Everyone gets their money. Everyone you know gets what their saying? money. But I just make sure that I pay my company before I pay anyone else. <clears throat> yeah. Oh yeah, and then um, I'm also uh, investing in a um, uh, a property in. Louisville, Kentucky. There's a um, nice. there's a there's a two residential, one commercial unit that they're redesigning into a and I'm 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 going in there as like a silent fifty percent owner slash investor. Why Kentucky? Oh, the, oh, oh I have a um, I have a real estate coach now. Who's okay. Sh- who's nice. showing me the ins and outs of everything that he built, um, that I don't know. So he he actually his name is David Valley. Okay. Look him up. He's shout fucking out, awesome. Shout out David Valley. Yep, at David Valley, at the real David Valley. I'll, I'll look up what his real. We'll pl- we'll plug it in. Yeah. So. Yeah. But uh, but he I met him in uh, in Puerto Rico doing jujitsu. I mm. beat him up on the fucking mats. <laughs> <laughs> He'll tell you. He'll like, tell no, you. I gotta give you what course you get him. <laughs> <laughs> I got him with everything. I got him with everything. No, but he'll, he'll, he'll let you know. But uh, after after we started talking, and I was just like, you know, real estate's my shit, and he's just like, no, real estate's my shit, and I was just like, I got two hundred fifty units, and he's just like, I got a thousand units, and I'm like, oh my god, real estate is your shit. <laughs> 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 and uh, and then and then after that, you know, uh, we 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 had a lunch together, and uh, he does like coaching and all that other shit. And once he told me how many units he 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 had, how fat he actually purchased a thousand units in uh in a year during Oops. during covid wow so it's just like like dude this guy made himself a fucking multi-millionaire 
during the worst fucking era. Well, a, a lot of times when there's like a like a setback like that, if you're liquid or if you know what to do and to look for an opportunity, you could double down and really walk out oh, of the no, crisis he, with. Dude, he would kill it. <clears throat> he killed it. Like yeah. the, the way the way he does everything, like he's he's killing it, and he's he's literally teaching me how to do it. So he he wants to get into the next phase, which is uh, redevelopment, mm. and I want to do the same thing. So now, um, I'm I'm basically. Uh, he's my coach slash business partner because you know we're we're kind of like both on right. the same level uh, financially, you know. So we, it's cool that he can bring me whatever business endeavors he's looking at. So he's he's looking at um, they're they're literally going to build a town. It's like a fucking In like a hundred and twenty. No, no, no. Kentucky's Kentucky's um, another one of his. Uh, partners are, are investing in it and like this is like a small deal and it's like for me to get my my feet wet as an investor right because right, I'm right. not I've never been an investor I've only invested in myself Got I've it. never given anyone else money and when I have I lost it you yeah. know what I'm saying I've I've loaned people like 15 here 10 there like to try to start but I never did it fucking officially and legally and they just beat me you right. know but I, I have I've had other deals with like friends that like you know i've, I've given like thirty thousand to and they they've given it back to me in like yeah. fucking a year because they genuinely were trying to start a business and right. were successful how does that feel <clears throat> investing now like bigger numbers into projects that aren't like oh you know, it's still risky no matter what it's still ri- like I'm, I'm not i'm not worried about it yeah just because i all my moves that i have set in place now like can cover my mistakes mm. you know what i'm saying but it's, it's a calculated risk it's still a fucking like my this is going to be my biggest investment yet i'm investing three hundred thousand dollars into a property that i've never fucking seen that i myself am not going to redevelop or manage yeah you know what i'm saying it's so in it's, other people's hands so yeah you, just you know check. so it's just like i'm just playing it cool when i'm on fucking phone calls with them but like i like dude i, I literally wanted to fly there touch the fucking building <laughs> yeah you know what I'm saying? You like they sure made me there. feel a lot more i literally got a text message about an hour ago saying like okay how about we fly over there you know we check out the building we fucking we meet the part i'm like yes yes I'm like on yes board. i'm like i was gonna fly there by myself just to fucking <laughs> squat in the building and make sure it was real you right. know like but it is it is a uh, it's it's still nerve wracking, but it's still a little bit easier to just know that, you know, just any single one of my moves is uh, is ready to just cash out and make up for whatever mistakes that I made. Right, you know, right. I, I also own a house in Florida that uh, I bought just for the appreciation value, you know. So I bought it two years ago at at uh, 335 and I just checked with um, with an agent um, this week. No, last week. And it's it's already worth four hundred, you know. Wow. So I so I made I made sixty thousand dollars, you just know, from owning it. Just from owning it, yeah. You know, and and it's it's because I I had to, you know, like a, right, like I I, uh, I just I just got a shit ton of moves. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, money in the bank yeah. just sits there. It doesn't really yeah, do anything for why. you. So that's so <clears throat> so uh, unfortunately, um, you know, God rest his soul. After my my uh, my father passed away, I inherited the company, but. Um, the company had financial debt that I needed to take care of. So it owed the bank $6 million that I had to pay back. And he didn't invest that money properly while, when he got the loan over his last, you know, you know, 15 years. So uh, what I had to do was I borrowed 9 million from from another bank, I paid off the original six million with the same buildings that he borrowed from. Actually, I removed one though, so I got a better deal. And then I had an extra uh, three million dollars to play with. But um, I asked for it as a as an open line of credit, which means that I don't have to start paying interest on that money until I actually spend it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So like, okay, I owe you. Basically, it's the difference between owing the bank thirty-five thousand dollars a month or fifty thousand dollars a month. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm borrowing the original six because I have to spend that right now, but I haven't touched that other fucking three, and mm. technically, it's not in my bank account; it's in yours. Yeah. You know what I'm saying because mm-hmm. it's an open line of credit, so I don't have to pay interest on any of that shit. Yeah. What they did was they were like, "Here's nine. You start paying me fifty thousand dollars a month now," and I'm just like. Fuck. 
yeah. <laughs> so let's get to work. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was just like, I need to like make investments. Buy shit, and, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I need to spend this money now in reference to something that it's going to bring me back like tenfold. You know, luckily for me, I was, I was building my own restaurant, my own franchise. So, and I was doing so because I own a property management company that owns its own buildings. So now since I own the franchise, I know that the expansion of that franchise is going to need commercial locations for potential franchisees. So now I can come in and buy mixed units buildings. I can set up commercial locations with hood systems, you know, and then I could potentially sell that restaurant to a franchisee that wants it for the down payment of the building, get my money back, and then copy and paste it all over again in another section. Is that what you have in the future, like, stored for you? Is that what you'd well, like yeah, to do, that, start franchising Dumpling Dojo? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I already started the paperwork to franchise Dumpling Dojo. I should be able to sell legal franchises of Dumpling Dojo at the beginning of next year. And then this year, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have two models that you could potentially buy into. Your dine-in model with um, just 20, uh, 20 seats, and um, and then your to go model that has n no seats at all, just a kitchen and like just, just a kitchen pickup. and that's it. You know what I'm saying? So, so it, it's the difference between a hundred thousand dollar startup and a three to four hundred thousand dollar startup. Yeah, you know. But no matter what, and that's still pretty good for a franchise. I mean, it's, like it's, it's to buy really, into. Well, it's really good for a franchise because you got to remember what numbers that I'm 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 potentially granting you. You know, so I'm going to, I can't calculate the to-go franchise numbers because we're not open yet, but I should be able to do it by the end of the, by the end of the year. But my current dine-in model grosses, uh, last year, th last year we broke 1.1 million. So this year we were on track to probably hit 1.3 to 1.5 because we didn't raise pricing until the last quarter of last year. Right, so those numbers are a little... So that's, so now this year is going to be the first... Oh, and we didn't open up on Mondays until mid-summer. Mm. So this year is going to be the first year that not only do we have the price increase, but we have the extra day Right. also. Makes a big difference. Makes a huge difference. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just that, just that extra Monday alone should bring in an extra, you know, between two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars worth of gross sales. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> still though, I mean saying like when you compare like what it costs to like open up other franchise, just it's, I think it's uh, great. No, well, yeah, yeah. No, it, uh, um, it's great I'm, for whoever's investing and buying in. It's I'm great. Tr I'm trying to keep it as simple as humanly possible. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Just because like I I was I when I first bought the restaurant, I didn't have a crew. You know what I'm saying? Like literally it was just me. Yeah. I was I was the cook, I was the manager, I was the fucking dishwasher. It fucking sucked. After I cooked all fucking day, I had to do an hour to an hour and a half uh, worth of dishes every yeah. single night for like two years, three years. Yeah. You know, like now now we're at the point where I want to make sure that none of my franchisees ever has to go through what I went through. Right. Just a playbook, repeatable. That's just, it. You know what I'm saying? Which like, is why I'm saying like being able to buy that and purchase that from you, from Dumpling Dojo's oh, yeah. at that price to me sounds very it's attractive killer. and appealing. It's killer. Well, not, not only that, but I'm also setting up the prep kitchen. So mm. like you're, you don't have to go to fucking Restaurant Depot or three different distributors, pick Wild. up all your material, turn it into dumplings, turn it into long tongs, turn it into sauce. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah. You don't have to do any of that. So not, not only do you get the franchise copy and paste model, but you, you get the cheapest labor overhead because I'm eliminating half of everything that I had to fucking do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you get, you get your product for as cheap as humanly possible and you get your kitchen built out in the most efficient way manner. You know, like it's, it's, I'm, 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 I'm giving you fucking what I created right. for the past seven fucking years. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Congrats. Yeah. How the That's name awesome. Dumpling Dojo came to be? Oh uh, well, I, I know there was a name change, but like when that needed to happen, what? It was literally uh, our dumplings were our shit, and I'm into martial arts, you know. So one guy on my team, I, I hired um, a con like a business consulting company, and one of the dudes was just like, "What about Dumpling Dojo?" He's just like, you know, like yeah. And I'm like, I kind of like that. And then uh, they, they, they had like another, a couple other names came up. No matter what, I paid for like a pole 
right. to happen and like you know it, it, it eventually picked but no matter what like dumpling what, Doja what was, were some of the other names though? I'm curious I don't even remember <laughs> nah nothing good uh, yeah. worthy. <laughs> worthy to remember <laughs> yeah yeah honestly it was it was like always dumpling Doja he said it once I was like I'm digging that I'm like make that one of the options and like pick whatever else you know I, I never really cared about any of that yeah okay dope dude hell yeah awesome. got a lot going on bro yeah how do, yeah. How do you do it all uh okay because uh, yeah today was my first decision to stop smoking weed so i'm taking a sabbatical for the for the next 30 days oh, wow. but how i did all of it was very high okay very <laughs> very fucking high <laughs> you're not wrong <laughs> a lot of stress that i've been i've been hearing in yeah this. Yeah, it's you know what I'm saying. Minutes. So like, literally, I was just the no coffee, just just yeah. Weed. I don't yeah, I don't I don't drink coffee. Yeah, I don't drink coffee at all. Like, but I do wake up and smoke weed. So, uh, my 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 morning routine consisted of literally uh, as soon as I wake up, I I roll up, I smoke, I look through maybe about like an hour's worth of uh, real estate on Zillow, on Loop. I look at commercial locations, real estate locations, and. Uh, I, I just search through different towns, different states, you know, like fucking Florida, Puerto Rico, New Jersey, like where, wherever I can, uh, wherever I can think of. And then, um, and then after that, I take a shower, brush my teeth and uh, get ready to go to jujitsu. I get jujitsu. You, you go to the way. early morning class. Yeah. So, but yeah. this is all happening early. So like, let's start with some times, right? So like, what, this is what, four in the morning, five in the morning? Four in the morning, five in the morning. <laughs> four in the morning, you're getting high and you're uh, going through some uh, <laughs> Zillow and loop that, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Productive. Yeah. <laughs> Just to make it in time for your 5, 6 a.m. class. Yeah, no. Yeah. 5.30? Uh, 6.30. 6.30. 6.30 class. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, it's basically like, depends on how early I, if I wake up at four, I might Instagram for like a half hour and bullshit. But let me ask you a serious question though. You enjoy waking up at that time? Uh, yeah, I really do. Yeah. I, I honestly, have to. I, I, it's not, it's not, I, I don't, I don't really find it like annoying anymore or like it's, it's. You did at one point. I, I, I never really found it annoying just because I always found something to do and then. I uh, and yeah, dude, you're not gonna be annoyed because you're fucking hot at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason to wake up. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Like, how annoyed or angry can you be when you're just high by yourself? You know, <laughs> like. Fair you know, enough. Yeah, no, for real. And if if I already found a property, then I would literally just play a little bit of video games. You yeah. know what I'm saying? For 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 like an hour, and then I'd start my day. You still game? Uh, I gave up gaming for a little while. I did still game, but now I, I, um, I, I just avoid it just because I don't have the time to do it. Right. Once I, once I have everything in place that I'm forming right now, right. because my, my, my kitchen's about to open, I have to buy another location. I have to set up my prep kitchen you know, like I have to finish Puerto Rico. I am selling Florida. Like I don't really have time for anything else. I I uh, I, I have two massage chairs at my house, and mm. you know, on my downtime, I just sit in my massage chair and fucking take naps. And like as soon as the massage chair setting goes off, I fucking I hit a different setting and I just take another nap and I do that for like an hour. <laughs> it's like all right, chair one num done. Yeah. Chair two, here we go. <laughs> for real, for real, for real. All right, so, all right. So you go to you go you you wake up, you get high. I wake up, I get high. I look at real <laughs> estate. As soon as I'm done with that, I, I uh, I, I, it depends on how I'm feeling too. If I if I'm feeling a little tight, I'll loosen up. You know, do some stretching, uh, take a warm shower, go to jujitsu. Uh, after jujitsu, try to um, try to go for my my walk i try to immediately get like at least like a, a three or five mile walk out of the out of the way before my day starts and then and then after that then okay then we we start answering fucking phone calls we start dealing with bullshit you know yeah there's uh there's just always some shit going on yep yeah you know i feel that so i, I deal i deal with the restaurant bullshit i deal with the tenant bullshit um luckily my my uh my kids are a little bit bigger so there's you really have a little no, more freedom. Yeah, there's, there's, there's they're really independent. No, they can take yeah, care of themselves. There's no issues there. They're, they're they're young men. You know, as long as you're not getting fucking arrested, what's 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 the worst that can happen? Right. You know, and then um, yeah, I basically do just restaurant and business shit all the day rest long. Of the day. Yeah, until maybe like nine. You know, and then at 
at nine, I uh, I try to wind down. If I can't wind down, I might hit up a uh, hit up a bar, grab a nightcap, go home, shower. I try to be in in bed between ten and eleven. Right. You know, just to just to really get some rest, and then uh, you know pass out and do it all over again. It's a productive day though. Yeah, yeah, and then it, okay. So now if I'm not working. Then, uh, then we basically do all the same morning shit, right? You know, uh, but we we fly to Puerto Rico, and uh, we just hang out. We go swim in, we go for walks, fucking kick it to whoever. Just do whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's a good life. And then, or or I'll, I'll and I'll just start doing jujitsu more. You yeah, know? I'll do I'll do more I'll classes. Do, oh yeah, well now I'm gonna I, basically I, I used to bike a lot too. Yeah. So during during this whole process. <clears throat> Uh, I used to do 17 miles of biking in the morning, uh, either before or after jujitsu. It's savage, bro. Yeah, savage. So be, Good be, cardio. basically, yeah. Whenever, whenever, whenever there's no work, it's more. It's just more play. More, have just more you, play have you um, <clears throat> like, so obviously you stay very physically active. Have you done like any like going back to what we were saying before, like marathons or half marathons? Or I used to like do that? Spartan races. Yeah. I used to do uh, all of them. I did the, the Spartan sprints, the supers, the beasts, the ultra beasts. It was, it used to be my mission to, uh, to get my trifecta. I fucking, I wore, I wore a Riddler cape for every Spartan race. And I, have, <laughs> I have my, uh, my trifecta Spartan patches sewn on to my Riddler cape. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. But, uh, I, I, I just train to train now. You yeah. Know? Like I don't, just to be healthy. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 more for my mental health than anything else. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I uh, I just have way too much uh, energy and aggression sometimes. You're how old are you now? I'm 41. Dude, you're young as fuck. Yeah. Super young. Yeah. Super young. Super young. Yeah. I mean, I guess. Yeah. I mean, do you feel old? Uh, no. No matter what, I don't ever feel old because I really think I'm just a big fucking kid, bro. You, you are. Know what I'm saying like you I'm, really <laughs> are though. Like I really am. <laughs> I like know? to look like, at it as in like. You, uh, like the approach is, you know, an adult bank account, but with like just a child, like, That's it, just, bro. Like, like for real, I, I, I have the spirit of a fucking five year old, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that can handle weed, <laughs> 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 you know? So it's just like, a, as, uh, as much as I, uh, as I know, I have to make good choices because, you know, I'm, I'm more of a an adult than anything else. You know, I'm still a fucking kid at heart. And it's right. just like, let's fucking have fun. And That's party. the most important thing, I think, yeah. honestly, bro. You You're know, just... like I, I, I'm learning, I'm learning how to have that, that attitude without the bad habits. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So we, we, we can experience that without alcohol. We can experience that without weed, you know? So let's, Let's let's try. Let's try now. Well, so that's what I asked you. So you're saying today's day one. Today's actually day one of you, no weed. You doing thirty days or just as long as you can? Uh, well, I figured I figured I was just gonna baby step it. You know. Okay. Fucking the the only time I ever uh, went without weed was when I was on parole. Okay. You know, so that that was the only time that I did like two years without smoking. Yeah. And is. Uh, it was very productive. It was a very productive two years. You know what I'm saying? But very boring, too. You know? like, <laughs> very, very fucking boring. Okay. So is this more like a mental thing now? Just like, all right, let's see what we can do? Yeah, yeah. Basically, it's more, um, you got you got a lot of shit going on. Um, let's, really, let's really work on not only getting all that shit taken care of, shit taken care of, but let's, let's work on successfully facing all of it completely sober. You know what I'm saying? Let's let right. let's not fall back on any habit that isn't required, and let's let's just try to progress in a different manner. Mm. You know, d depending on how I feel at the end of this month, you know, whether I go back to smoking in the mornings or nights or weekends, it's just I, I'm not even thinking about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm more thinking about let's just try to make this a, a successful 30 days. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Honestly, I, I give you a lot of props, dude. Like for the shit you do, just the smoking and all that. And granted, you're not smoking for this month, but 
Oh yeah, we do a lot. lot. A lot of people. A lot of people can't even understand how I did everything that I did, let alone doing it fucking high. Because you know we get the bad stigma of oh you know smokers don't get shit done. Oh, I think you were the perfect example. No, no. Okay, well that that's that that's a stigma that I think is complete and utter bullshit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Mm -hmm. fuck it. Like I do understand where that stigma stems from, but that definitely doesn't fucking apply. I I enjoy smoking weed to do shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm like. What will make this better? Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm not like, okay, let's smoke weed so we can do this. I'm like, you know what would be a little more fun? (laughs) (laughs) A little more flavor. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, let's do it all over again. Let's try it high this time, okay? (laughs) (laughs) No, that's funny, bro. Yeah, for real, for real, for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, I, I, before, before my dinner rush, I'd fucking get high. Before I handle. The POS system, I'd get high. Like before I expedited, I would get high. Fucking before I did my construction shit. High. <laughs> yeah, like for real. For I just, I'm like, it's 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 whatever. You know, yeah. it, it compl- my uh, my 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 thought process of it is, as long as my body is completely relaxed, my mind tends to be a little bit more relaxed. And I don't make any decisions based off of my emotions. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm not going to approach you angry. I'm not going to fucking approach you disgruntled. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm already fucking calm and I'm ready to fucking handle your bullshit. Yeah. You know, so that that's so why can't I have that mentality without the bud? Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just like so. So now I'm just working on. The things that relax my body, you know yeah. what I'm saying. So, so let me do my jujitsu, let me get my intense cardio out of the way, you know, let me get my intense workout out of the way, because now I don't have that fucking energy to fucking come at you and kill you anyway. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm 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 relaxing myself without it, and then if I'm relaxed, then now same concept. My bot, my mind's relaxed. And now I can approach the situation without fucking anger or, or emotions. It's a neutral. Yeah. 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 I hear that. Totally, bro. Um, so to anybody who's looking to get into business, anybody who's looking to do like real estate, anybody who's looking to do like restaurant stack. shit. Stack. That's, stack. That's, that's, that's I tell advice. everyone, stack, Just save. bro. Just save. No one knows how to fucking save, bro. No one knows how to fucking save. And you never know when, when a stack is going to get you something. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was, when I was younger, I always stacked. You know, my my fir- my very first hustle was in second grade. I uh, I used to walk to the conven- I used to walk to school every day with my sister. We used to walk to the convenience store. I would buy five super bubbles for five cents each, and when I got to so- school, I would sell four of them for a quarter, and I would eat my super bubble. <laughs> so I would make. Fucking 75 cents every day. Yeah. Plus, I'd eat my free yeah. f- super bubble. You know what I'm saying? And I'd make 75 because I would always reinvest the 25 back into super bubble. So at the end of the week, I always made like, you know, $3. Fucking, yep. you know, for at the end of every week. Yep, yep. You know what I'm saying? And that was in second grade. Yeah. You know, if I, 10 years later, I'm working at a comic book store uh, and... I'm working so well at the comic book store that the comic book supplier would pick me up and take me to comic book conventions and have me work 14 hour days on Saturday and Sunday when I wasn't in school. This is when I'm fucking 11 and 12 and 13. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So now I would, he would have me wait online so he could get autographed versions of the comic book. You know, and I would literally just wait online for him. And then, you know, once I got close, I'd fucking radio him in. He'd come, he'd bring a stack, and then I'd go back and I'd, I'd take care of it. But then I was just like, why can't I get autographed comic books too? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I would be like, okay, here are mine. You know, get your shit signed, get my shit signed. And then now I turned a $3 comic book into a fucking 40 or $50 comic mm. book. And I'm selling it to my fucking friends at school. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, like... I go, I go at 11 and 12, I'm making like literally fucking like $200 a weekend, $300 a weekend. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I stacked. Yeah. You know, I love like, that. like no matter what, like I, I always, always stack. And just because I wrote this the other day, this is, um, I always say it's never a lack of uh, money. It's a lack of, um, 
creativity. Oh, yeah. It's a lack of just recognizing opportunity of like how you can make money. All right. I wrote this uh, the, I don't know, maybe like a month ago. So this, this is in reference to stacking. Okay. So best advice is for people to understand uh, the financial breakdown of like, you know, individual finance. So I believe that there's five tiers to financial stability. Okay. Okay. Tier one, bills paid. That's it. You go to work, you pay your bills. Right. That's it. You don't have a fucking girlfriend. You don't get to go on vacations. Right. You don't get to fucking go out to eat. You know what I'm saying? And step one. Step one. Must. Bills paid. Yep. All right. Step two. All right. You want to, you want to hit the second tier? You have stable finances to live and experience. Okay. So you got your bills paid. You get to have a girlfriend. You get to go out. You get to go on vacation. Mm. All right. So now you got your bills paid. And you're living a little bit. Right. All Some right. dinners. All right. But, little trip. But you still haven't saved any money. Right. Correct? No, no, no. Right? Yep. You're, st- you're still not stacking. Nope. All right. So there's there's tier three, save and stack. You know what I'm saying? So not only do you have your peels, your bills paid, not only can you get to go out and fucking have some fun, you yep. have a girlfriend, but you're also saving money at the same time. Okay. Okay. Like whether it. whether you want to put that at fucking two. <laughs> you know, it's completely up to you. I would recommend putting it at two. I only put it at three because everyone wants a fucking girlfriend. Most people want experiences yeah. versus You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So that, that's why I put it I would it put three. it at two. I, I, Fuck that. Everything else can wait. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, that's I, me personally. I know, but we're, we're going... Well, I, I came up with this because we're like going this. by how everyone thinks, keep going, not keep how going. I think. No, I keep going. I want to know what You know what I'm four. saying? Okay, so four is invest and grow without working. Okay, so you've saved and stacked so much money while you're paying your bills, while you're enjoying that, okay, what am I going to do with all this money that I saved? Make your money work for you. Exactly. So now we invest and we grow without working. You know what I'm saying? So fucking, okay, we saved so much money. We invest over here. Okay, this is bringing us in a little bit of money, but we managed to save another. We invest over here. All right, this is bringing us a little bit of money. We tap five or three years later, we saved some more. Right. So now we have multiple investments. Yep. All right. We still have savings. Mm-hmm. We're still living good. Yep. You know what I'm saying? We're still paying our bills. Love it. Those are those are those are four tiers. All right. And so now 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 number five. You don't have to really work because you're you're investing. Right. You know what I'm saying? And your investment money is supplying your bills paid, supplying your lifestyle, and supplying your save. Okay, so number five, your cash flowing so positive that savings becomes donating. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm title. saying? Because like I love that. So you're good. You're good in every direction. Yeah. You don't have to fucking work. You could still save fucking money. Help. Right. Help. You're at the end. Yeah. You're at the fucking end. Yes. What else do you need? You, it just there's excess. That's there's calling. excess. Yeah. There's excess. All right. Give back. Just give back. Start donating. I love okay. That. Whether. Whether you donate your time, whether you donate your money, or just just donate. Right. Donate something. Yeah. You have. You have. You that's you did. You did. You've done everything. Yeah. And it usually takes a lifetime. You yep. know what I'm saying? If you do, if you get there by twenty, you get there by thirty, you get there by fifty. Who cares? Who cares? Right. Give it back. Give yeah. it back now. I love that. You know. Are you putting that into like a book? Are you gonna paint that to like a poster? What are you doing? Oh, with that? I don't know. I don't know. That's just, really cool. I, I really really down. like that. I just wrote it down. I wrote it down. I was just because I. Were you high? I yeah. <laughs> 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 without a doubt, without a doubt, I've had, I've had, I've had, my, I've had so much best. Like, <laughs> no, but uh, I came, I came up with this because um, the house that I sold, I sold to one of my friends, and like this is his first property, you know. So like now he wants to start investing and like start, and, and so I broke down like the structure. Right. I'm like, I'm like, so I'm like, you're, you're at, you're at stage three. You're at stage. F- um, Four. Four. You know what I'm saying? Because he stacked so much money that now he's investing in that home. Right. He's not buying that house for him to live in. It's he's an buying, asset for him to be able to asset. bring in some cash flow. You know flow. what I'm saying? Yeah. So like you're you're already at stage four because you 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 you're married, you take care of your wife, you guys go on vacation, all your fucking bills are paid, and you stacked up enough money. And what did you do with that money? You didn't splurge, you're put you you're you're investing it in a right. house, in an asset. That's only going to fucking get you to the potentially the last step. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? But you probably got about another fucking 10 years or 15 years of step four before you're going to reach step five. But I mean, you're already at step four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like most people don't get past step one. Yeah. 
That's very true. You know what I'm saying? And most people aren't past step one when they're in a relationship. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So then fucking, oh, I don't know why my relationship didn't work out. I don't know, man. Because fucking you put everything on your fucking credit card and buried yourself in fucking debt to the point where fucking you had to fucking work and not see your woman anymore. And then she fucking started complaining that she never got to see you because you spent all your fucking money foolishly. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. I don't know. That sounds like my repeated process many motherfucking times. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 that's a tough one though, and, and you know, being be, being ambitious and being successful, right? It's like you choose one have, of the having a right the right partner essentially, yeah. right? Having someone you know who's gonna saying? be cool with you putting in eighteen hour days and just like I'll see you when I see you. Yeah, that's it. Like I'll see you when I see you. So yeah. Like it's time to work. Yeah. And uh, that's it. You know. So that's that's my best best uh, best tip. Stack, I, I, dude. I love and, that. And understand the five tiers of financial stability and freedom. We should turn that into like a poster. Would you be down? Yeah, yeah. Yo, I Manny, forward you this. Manny, we're gonna. We're he already gonna, made it. He's it's, it's Manny, in his head. So Manny's our graphic designer. He's gonna make something fucking hot. Word. You know, like the Nike Time Principle rules. Yeah. Anthony DeFino, boom, fucking stack. Dumpling dojo. Dumpling dojo. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> just, make, we gotta advertise. Gotta advertise. <laughs> and, then, and, 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 and then we put. Off, we'll frame it, and we'll put it in your restaurant. Yeah. My gift to you. I'm down. Let's yes. do it. Yes. Fuck yeah. For real, bro. <laughs> Thank you. Bro. Appreciate Yo, we'll that. make something dope out of that. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm down, dude. Thank you. Um, so listen, bro, this has been fun. This has been great. Is there anything you want to plug in? You want to put in your socials, dumpling dojos, eat their food, general sal chicken with the fried rice, yeah, no, no yeah. mushrooms. That's my yeah. to-go to order. Like Krispy Kreme shrimp, either the lemonade or the limeade, oh, yeah, I mean, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the Nutella wontons. Poor, and Fuck the, yeah, and the, bro. And the pork dumpling. Pork dumpling steamed. If you get the pork dumpling steamed, they get tossed in a ginger butter soy sauce, and they're fucking amazing. And now we have deep fried ice cream. Oh, deep fried ice cream. All right, what? I guess I know where I'm eating today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, bro, t- uh, just where, where can they find you? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Dumpling Dojo at 16 Glen Road, Rutherford, New Jersey. Uh, I myself am Tony Ramens on Instagram. And uh, check out uh, David Valley. Awesome. David Valley on the real, I think it's the real David Valley or something like that on Instagram. Uh, yeah, he's my coach, and I, uh, I definitely recommend him. Fuck yeah. Awesome, dude. Thank you for coming today. Loved having you. Thanks for having me. Thank you very insightful. Thank you, guys. Peace. Peace.